Hey everyone, thanks for calling in. If, um, if folks are willing to turn on video, that would uh, be excellent. I'm hoping to try and make this as interactive as possible um, and get people uh, running things and just, yeah, have folks asking questions rather than showing slides. I think we've all had a good dose of that this morning. Um, it looks like we've got around 20 people on the call. Um, all right. So um, the, the plan today is uh, just to spend about 30 minutes getting hands on with the intake stack library, which um, I gave a lightning talk on earlier. And in the, in the chat, I put a link to those slides. Um, I'm not going to go over them again, but at a really high level, uh, what the goal of intake stack is, um, is, a, is a Python library designed to facilitate data management for any data that's uh, referenced in a stack catalog. So the goal is to go from exploring a stack catalog to getting um, a data object in Python without having to worry about what the URL is, um, what the path is to that data that you might want to download and then open. The goal is to open uh, directly in Python and start computing. So can folks see my screen? Great. Yeah, I see some nods. Um, so this is um, the GitHub repository for intake stack. Um, and at the, there's, you know, some light instructions here. Uh, you can install this with pip or conda if you like working from your laptop. Um, we're in the process of making a new release right now that's compatible with latest stack versions. So down in the readme, you'll see here uh, intake stack versions and then stack catalog version compatibility. So this is part of the sprint that happened last week is this update so that things are compatible with um, stack 1.0, but we haven't actually made a, a release yet. Um, but you can run things interactively with this link at the top of the readme in the repository that says launch binder. So uh, everyone who's joining in, um, please go ahead and do that. And that's going to spin up a machine um, running on the cloud uh, that installs intake stack with all its um, dependencies and gives you access to these Jupyter notebooks, which we can run um, in this tutorial. So we've put together uh, five example notebooks. And this is kind of the state of where documentation's at with this library. It's pretty new. and so. We um, we just have these example notebooks for people to work with. Um, for starters, I'm going to show the planet disaster data notebook. So clicking, I'm assuming you've got some familiarity with the uh, Jupyter notebooks. This is just like running on your laptop, except that it is running um, on Google Cloud. So clicking the planet disaster data link brings up um, <clears throat> a notebook that illustrates the use of intake stack. And this uh, notebook accesses Planet's uh, disaster data catalog. So we've got some links in here, and you can see um, uh, folks may have seen Stack Browser earlier, where you can explore what is in this data set, um, clicking through the Stack catalog and finding um, Planet Scope imagery over Houston after Hurricane Harvey. So this data is public. It's available. Uh, you don't need authentication to access it. And it's also on Google Cloud, so uh, I believe. And this is another key point of intake stack is that it, it works whether you're running on a laptop or whether you're running on one of these servers in the cloud. It works best when you're running on the same server where the data is located. So um, it's best to run. Um, if, if Planet is hosting data in Google Cloud, it's best to run this in Google Cloud. 
So I'm going to run through this notebook. Uh, shift enter is how you execute execute uh, these Python cells, the code, um, and just kind of walk through slowly what's going on behind the scenes. Um, first of all, we import intake. As I mentioned, it's a library uh, that you just install, a uh, pip install intake stack uh, or conda. Um, and then intake has a registry of plugins. So intake stack is a plugin to this broader intake package, which is meant to facilitate loading any kind of data in Python. It's not specific to stack. You could have uh, uh, comma separated variable files, text files sitting on your hard drive, um, uh, or you could have a stack catalog with geospatial imagery. Um, it's very generic, but you'll see in this registry, um, since in this environment we've installed intake stack, we have uh, some functions available to us, stack catalog, stack collection, stack item collections. So um, this is really sort of uh, a way to coerce catalogs and stack into something that intake understands. And so I'm pointing towards a URL here, which is a static stack link. It's pointing to catalog. Um, JSON. And intake has an open stack catalog command, and we just give it that root uh, URL of the catalog. And we can see um, we load this in, we have a catalog object, and then within that catalog object, we can crawl down and find um, whatever's contained within it. So in this case, there's a sub catalog that's called um, Hurricane Harvey. So uh, this catalog also has uh, metadata that you can access. Uh, stack is just JSON behind the scenes. So you can also use the metadata attribute of the catalog to print out um, all the information about this catalog. And um, we use sort of a dictionary syntax to drill down until you get to the assets. Uh, so this is crawling the static stack catalog until we get to data. Um, going through sub catalogs. And just like we did in the browser interface that I showed a minute ago, um, we're drilling down until we get to stack items. And again, we have metadata for any item. So this is a RGB image over Houston. Items have assets associated with them. So um, for this particular acquisition over Houston, we have both a thumbnail and a mosaic. Uh, we can look at the metadata for the thumbnail. You see that it is a PNG image. And there's a URL contained behind the scenes in this catalog. So as a user, you never have to specify that long URL string. Um, you're just interacting with attributes of the catalog. And um, we can open this uh, image by specifying the thumbnail.url path. And because we're running in a Jupyter Notebook um, uh, in the web browser, it's easy to display uh, images, for example, PNGs. But what we really want to do is we're interested in uh, scientific analysis or some sort of um, analysis that's not just visualization. You might want to take profiles through the imagery, compute means of subregions. Um, the sky's the limit as far as what sort of computations you might want to do with the full resolution data. So uh, intake stack also has built into it a convenience function to Dask um, that's uh, available for uh, uh, TIFF um, assets. So in this case, the item has the, the thumbnail PNG, but it also has a mosaic, which is uh, Cloud optimized GeoTIFF. So, to show that, again, we can print out um, metadata for any object. And we see um, this is a, uh, sorry, here we go, type. Uh, the type of this image, as um, Stated in the stack metadata is a geotiff, cloud optimized geotiff. 
So to Dask is going to give back an X-Array data array. And this is for multi-dimensional data. So for example, an RGB mosaic has three bands, the red, the green, the blue. Um, this is quite a big image. We have the three bands and 22,000 pixels by 21,000 pixels. Uh, we have this X-Array object now, and all we've done is read in the metadata. So that's why it seems so fast to load this data set. We have not downloaded any um, bytes of information from the image, just the metadata for this image. And um, we can specify different types of chunking if we want to do parallel processing. So as a cloud-optimized geotiff behind the scenes, every bit of this three-dimensional array is stored as smaller tiles. Um, that are something like 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 pixels. Um, we can specify how we want to map out operations um, on this cube, this, this data cube. And so we, now that we have this object in X-Array, we can use X-Array operations to do whatever we want. So we can specify how we want to dice up this image for our operations. We can then do things like uh, extract subsets um, and plot subsets at the full resolution um, for a particular band. <clears throat> so this is a pretty uh, slick kind of interface for interacting with multidimensional data. Once you get it into X-Ray, then you have all kinds of operations available to you. <clears throat> um, so that's a, a lot of information really contained in in a small notebook. A lot of libraries are working behind the scenes to, to make this process fairly simple uh, for a user. Um, but do folks have questions about anything I've shown so far? So I have a quick question, Scott. Um, one is, is basically, so in terms of the intent behind intake stacks, some of it seems like it's doing a nice stack traversal. Um, which is something I think a few other libraries like PyStack or things might handle. And then the other part is sort of um, the, the data set reader aspect of it. So is there a, a place where maybe these other alternatives work better um, for certain types of operations or what's like the niche where it, is intake stack good just because it covers kind of all of that at the same time? Um, yeah, good question. I think it is useful because it covers those two key components, which you mentioned, the catalog traversal and the loading of data sets. Um, we uh, started out, uh, I guess, a year ago on this library and used um, the SAT stack library behind the scenes. Um, there could be another library behind the scenes that's a dependency. So PyStack is one you mentioned. Um, that really is what is being used for the catalog traversal. Um, and this library just brings together one of those other, like one library for catalog traversal, and then whatever plugins you need to actually load the data um, into Python. So it's kind of this, um, I view it very much as the glue to, to bring in the pieces that you need for the full analysis. Cool, very cool, thanks Scott. Yeah. Um, any other questions? I'll show another notebook here in a minute. I was just, I think I posted in the chat, uh, if it's easy to, you know, down, let's say I'm interested in, in downloading the data for whatever reason locally, is it straightforward or is it better to use SAT search? Um, so you are actually, um, this library is using SAT stack behind the scenes um, and you have access to all of the functions um, but we haven't really exposed them transparently okay. uh, there so you could do for an item um, there's actually this hidden um, attribute stack object which is um, this is something that could certainly be improved in the future you know sometimes you want to you want to download an image yeah. Um, so you have a sat stack item, uh, sat stack. Let me just open a web page here. Uh, 
um, this is what I was just mentioning is like there are various libraries out there for catalog uh, management and traversing. And so Statstack is one. And uh, there is a download uh, function built into this. So um, we can see that this item uh, also has this uh, sat stack, all the functions in stat stack. So you can download, you can run a download command. Uh, I think you have to tell it if you want to download the thumbnail or the ask or the mosaic. Yeah. And, um, and we downloaded uh, that. <clears throat> um, I thought we downloaded that. Uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, you have to specify what you want to download, like band or whatever you want. I think that mm -hmm. it's. Uh, but you can you can access a download feature that way, and this is something that we might improve upon in uh, yeah. in the future. Yeah, I'm I'm just confused. You know what library is best for? Let's say I'm just downloading versus analysis. So there is it seems like probably just downloading. You mm -hmm. it in in tech. Yeah, yeah, and so far the focus on this has has really been on uh, data that's sitting in cloud storage where we don't want to download. We just want access directly where the uh, data is in like AWS S3 or Google Cloud bucket. So um, I want to show, make sure we show one other notebook. Uh, there are several here, um, but uh, Earth search um, illustrates how to, how to interact with a with a search. Um, so we just showed opening a catalog from a URL, which is a static catalog URL. You can also use uh, the stat search library to dynamically search a stat catalog. So let's say we want to work with Sentinel two cogs or Landsat eight, and we want to work with a subset of data returned from the search. So that's where stat search comes in. It returns, um, we're using, this is something put together by Elman 84 and is searching various collections stored on AWS. So now we're looking at data on AWS and we use the SAT search to query um, this endpoint and get back uh, results. These results are a, a stack item collection. And so over this small latitude longitude bounding box and we're looking at uh, July through August, um, we found 17 items. Um, again, we can open uh, a stack item collection instead of a stack catalog. This is an item collection. So we open stack item collection, and now we have an intake catalog that once again, we can crawl. We can see the assets, we can display um, thumbnails, and we can also, um, stack various bands together to give back a more sophisticated data cube of information. So for Sentinel-2, we've got a lot of um, bands here. We have 1 through 12, all corresponding to different optical bands, um, and I think near-infrared as well. Um, one, uh, sorry, lost my place. One nice thing about stack that I really like is you have uh, references to the bands using common band names. So I can never remember, you know, what is band one, what is band two um, for any given sensor. Um, so using these common band names is really quite convenient. So for example, we want to do a NDVI analysis. We need the near infrared and the red band from that sensor. We don't even have to go through the documentation and figure out which bands correspond to which of those common names. That's all contained within stack. Um, intake stack has another convenience function. So similar to to dask, this is a convenience function built in that does this uh, stacking for us um, in X-ray. So I'm asking here for the, just the near infrared and red bands from this particular item. <clears throat> and, um, Again, we specify a uh, chunk structure for that data set. So here again, we've got a data cube that represents um, uh, the full resolution data, but we're just reading in metadata so far. Uh, it's about a 500 megabyte array, two bands, near infrared and red. Um, this is 
conveniently stored um, as an X-ray data set. Um, and you can see here, we can store these data variables by their common name. So now when you run computations within X-ray, um, you can reference uh, these bands by their common name to do, to do indexing. Um, so an NDBI index would look like this line of code here. I could probably make this much bigger. Sorry, everyone. Um, where, where you're referencing in the X-ray data set the bands you want to use. And again, you can do various types of subsetting on these uh, X-ray objects. Um, so here we're going to do this, uh, this computation of NDVI, going to select a subset, and we're going to plot that subset um, <clears throat> for this particular item. Cool. And I do want to show another example that um, is pretty neat for more interactive analysis in the browser. So another notebook I'm going to run here is uh, the Intake Holoviz notebook. <clears throat> so yeah, there was a note in the chat about using matplotlib behind the scenes, which is true. When we ran plot in that last one, it's just a static plot. Um, often you want that, you just want to, you know, screenshot a 2D image and you don't need the fancy interactivity, um, but sometimes the fancy interactivity is, is pretty great. So I'll show a notebook here that um, illustrates um, all of this. Again, in this notebook, there's some links. If you're unfamiliar with these libraries, these are um, all of this is a collection of uh, browser based visualization libraries for Python. So there are a few of them. Um, and I will illustrate a few of them in this notebook for visualizing raster data. So I'm going to go ahead and use we're using actually the output from the last notebook which is this item collection from the search we did. Uh, there was a, a point in that last notebook where we saved the stack item collection to JSON in the local directory. So we have a copy of that. Um, we're going to run this same code cell here, which is the open item collection to give us an intake catalog. Um, intake has a built-in graphical user interface, which is pretty convenient for going through, rather than like traversing this dictionary and printing out all the sub catalogs, we can use a graphical interface to go through the catalog. So the in intake has a GUI, a graphical user interface, and you just add a reference to whatever catalogs you want to browse. <clears throat> and um, hopefully that runs, yeah. Took a, took a second there. I guess it's reading in all the metadata for these various stack items. Um, but this is a bit more convenient, right? We can see all the, um, all the items in this item collection. And for any one of these, we have a list of the assets for the item. And over here, we see all the metadata for any of these items. So for band one, for example, we can see that it's a coastal uh, bands, um, that it's a geotiff, cloud optimized geotiff, etc. cetera. Uh, there's also some built-in plotting capability here. So this is kind of similar to a stack browser type interface. Um, for a thumbnail, for example, it's not super intuitive right now, but if you click on this plot button, um, there are some built-in kind of pre-configured plots. <clears throat> and uh, so here we've got the thumbnail displayed. Um, you can even display um, all of you's plots. So for a bands, which is a cloud optimized geotiff, you'll see there is a built in geotiff plot. Um, this uh, is probably going to take a, a second. I mentioned earlier that it's good to run uh, wherever the data is stored. In this case, we're reading. Um, data that's sitting in US West 2, but we're actually running uh, this notebook in Google Cloud. And um, we haven't really like optimized the plotting yet. So uh, we're not uh, 
grabbing the overview first. I believe we are streaming the whole um, the whole image across. Um, but here we go. Uh, you know, we've quickly pulled in band four uh, at uh, at full resolution for this um, geotiff in the browser. Except um, Holoviz is a tool that's uh, efficiently doing this so that we don't put all 100 or 400 megabytes in the browser. Um, that's being read behind the scenes and then only the uh, rendered uh, PNG or JPEG actually gets displayed in the notebook. So similar to some of these libraries we saw earlier where you're, um, you're not actually passing the entire GeoTIFF into the browser, you're passing a, a rendered um, capture of it to the browser at any given time. But um, as you zoom in, uh, your resolution is updated because the full information is stored in memory. So I'm going to illustrate how that works. Um, you have these tools on the right hand side here for interactivity. As you zoom or as you move your mouse around in these images, we're getting the coordinates as well as the value for whatever band we're displaying. And um, uh, let's let's zoom in on a particular section here. Um, you'll see the resolution and color scaling update automatically based on whatever uh, zoom level we're, we're in. Um, <clears throat> I believe this is 10 meter per pixel data. So you can get in, you can get in um, at really high resolutions and uh, interrogate the data this way. So it's, it's a very nice, um, very nice library for interactive exploration of, of raster data. So, so this is all kind of built into intake, this, uh, an intake stack, this ability to browse interactively. Um, but again, kind of the, the core idea behind intake stack is to give you back um, uh, Python data objects that you can decide what to do with yourself. So there's some built-in plots, yes, uh, but you can do all of these plots on your own just by getting the x-ray data arrays back. So to illustrate how that works, um, let's see, say you have a particular item of interest. Um, the code cell below here is showing what I uh, illustrated before, where you can crawl through the catalog to get to items, to specify whatever asset you want, and return an X-ray uh, data array. So running this cell, um, gives us back a Hall of Views plot of the thumbnail. Um, so this is sort of what's done automatically for you behind the scenes when you're running that graphical interface. And similarly, we can, um, <clears throat> we can grab uh, full resolution bands um, using the to dask function, uh, put those into a data array and then run um, any of the hollow hollow views plotting um, to display plots. So this code cell here is running the HV plot image command, which uh, is giving us kind of what we saw earlier. I'm looking at a different band here, but once again, we have this interactivity where you can zoom in um, and the resolution is going to update based on our, our zoom level. <clears throat> and um, just one other illustration, um, because this is sort of designed with the interface in mind of people working in a Jupyter Notebook, uh, it's pretty easy to plug into all, any, any other Python library you might want to use. So this last code cell is using IPy widgets to put together like just a super basic thumbnail browser. Um, where we're iterating over the items in the catalog. And then we can just quickly display um, whatever metadata fields we might want. Uh, in this case, I wanted to look at cloud cover um, and just the item ID. So I'm, print, I'm displaying those two fields and, uh, and just using a Python um, display command to show us this thumbnail. And um, IPy widgets gives you a slider, so you can you can navigate through 
uh, this entire collection pretty, pretty quickly. All right. Any questions from, from folks? Could be a stretch, but I'm wondering if there's potential to use the CMR stack adapter so you could do this sort of metadata reading for CMR records. Yeah, um, that is a great question. Uh, that is a work in progress right now. So CMR, oh, cool. yeah, um, I think it's almost there, um, but didn't quite have it ready in time for today. Um, but let me show you. <clears throat> in the intake uh, stack uh, code repository right now, there's an open issue um, that we're working out for uh, mm -hmm. loading in data from NASA CMR. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's being like worked I, on. I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the complication, so one of the reasons those no, the notebooks that I've uh, showcased work so well is that the data is um, uh, in public buckets. So you'll notice in those notebooks, there's no, um, there's no cell for authentication. There's no need for you to enter in credentials to get at, uh, get at that data. And as a result, it's super easy to um, kind of stream things and open things. Uh, but for anything that has authentication, uh, that adds this extra level of complexity where you have to figure out some way for securely allowing people to put credentials in. Right, well, not to go too, too off the deep end, but to read just the granule metadata, you shouldn't need to be off, like the, just to the, just read the file metadata from CMR, you shouldn't need to be authenticated, right? Like you should just only need that authentication if you're accessing the files themselves. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll look more into it. Um, it's good to know that somebody's thinking about this already. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's also, uh, Matt Hansen here, it's also important to note that uh, the CMR stack that's in production right now is not yeah. the latest version. Um, right. The work is complete, but the latest version is on UAT, and I think it's it's still going to be a couple weeks before it's there. One of those changes uh, returns the total number returned, which is kind of required right now in SAT search. So if you're using SAT search to do the search, it's it's not going to work. Um, I do have a branch that we had a branch working with it, but it'll all be a moot point in a few weeks, hopefully. Well, yeah, and the CMR stack proxies open source, right? So even if it's only in UAT, the deployed version, I can probably see what the code is doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could start up a local instance too and point it at CMR, yeah. So you can always do that. I'll try really quick to show, um, let's see, uh, the CMR step in action because I think it's, it's really exciting. So um, let's see. So just so everyone is aware, um, and I believe there was a lightning talk, I couldn't make it earlier to this, but um, uh, there's this NASA CMR stack uh, website. And basically all of NASA's uh, assets are uh, indexed within the common metadata repository. And so if you have a stack catalog, um, you can explore all of um, NASA's collections with this, um, all the tooling that's been discussed today. Um, so, so there is an endpoint earth data, CMR earth data .nasa .gov, um, which has um, all the collections as stack collections. So um, I'll try and show, I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, let me see. I think I think this might work. Uh, this is running locally. Uh, this notebook is not one of the example notebooks um, that we 
saw earlier, but it gives you an illustration of like what's currently being worked on. Um, so the goal here is to explore these um, CMR catalogs, just like uh, Amy was talking about. And um, if we go back to that endpoint I was showing, so, so you'll see here, um, again, this is the NASA CMR stack repository, and there's a deployed at link. You can see that um, it's not a single search endpoint. There are actually multiple endpoints based on the NASA data center. Um, so uh, USGS Eros is in here as well, apparently. Um, but uh, um, one uh, data archive I often use is uh, the Alaska Satellite Facility. So they have their own collections and search endpoints contained within here. And uh, in this quick example, I'll just illustrate that because for SAT uh, search, which we used in an earlier illustration to search uh, Sentinel-2 COGS, um, SAT search has an input, has a URL as input for where you are searching. So instead of the Sentinel-2 COG search endpoint, we're putting in the Alaska Satellite Facility stack endpoint in this cell down here. And um, <clears throat> let me get to it just a second. So we can, we can look at the collections contained within any, uh, any of those um, NASA data centers. And um, similarly, you can look at all the various metadata and descriptions for each collection. But we can do a search with SAT search on any of these NASA stack endpoints. Uh, specifying a specific collection. And um, yeah, this is 500 items. And uh, I guess, Amy, to your point, we haven't done any authentication. Uh, this is just browsing the metadata. So we can go in, we can look at um, a browse image, even we can look at thumbnails, possibly. Yeah, in this case, we're able to open thumbnails but if we want to um, open the full resolution data, then it, it's going to require us to authenticate. And if we try and run this to dask function to, to get back a data array, um, we're currently failing because we don't have any authentication built into this system yet. And using a netrc file doesn't work. That's probably, uh, isn't it? Somebody, right? So uh, you can load uh, uh, HDF5 directly um, if it's stored on S3, but it is pretty inefficient. So it would work. The reason this is failing currently is um, just the authentication. Um, yeah, and again, there's a lot you can do that's not, um, that's, all running on the cloud that's not like performance optimized, right? Such as reading an HDF file from a S3 bucket. Um, you can do it, uh, but you're doing a ton of network calls behind the scenes and it's not as efficient for reading subsets as using something like uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF. Um, Scott, I was asking about the net, a net RC file. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry, I heard net CDF. Um, yeah, that's uh, there's a currently an open issue to to kind of figure out um, how to do this. So back on the intake stack. Uh, okay. Sorry, I'll check out the issue. But so yeah, net, I'm, doing using a netrc wasn't working. That's right. Yeah, it's not uh, not currently working. I would love for someone to figure out how to do it. <laughs> so okay. I'm gonna go ahead and post this issue in the stack. Maybe they're in the chat. Um, because I'm sure there are people on the call who could figure this one out. <laughs> so we will face the same issues, let's say, if, if I'm using, let's say, one of the Sentinel data that is user page bucket, right? I have to authenticate. And right now we cannot authenticate. Is that the current state of status? Um, you, you can. Um, but okay. it's not really built into the intake stack library. So um, okay. uh, 
but there are ways there are ways to get around it. Um, but it's just not like conveniently figured out in a way that's easy for a user. So is it is it built into SAT search or PyStack? Let's say for like authentication for AWS for let's say Sentinel two data, right? Which one is user pays bucket? <clears throat> I don't know. It sounds like Matt Hansen's on the call. Maybe he could answer about oh. SAT uh, uh, stack, but. Behind the scenes, um, intake stack is using a library called uh, FS spec to do all the reading of uh, data from S3, from Google Cloud. Um, and that library has the ability to enter in your credentials. For example, if you store them in a file locally or pass in, um, there's a way to set up a session where you pass in temporary credentials, for example, for access to S3 or Google. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think, Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, SAT search will support arbitrary headers, so you can at least include authentication headers with your search request. Yeah, you can, you can add in headers um, for sure. However you generate those is up to you. All right, I think we're actually just like a minute over. So this is good timing maybe to wrap, wrap it all up. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Scott.